Hello everyone, my name is Nick Hopwood. Uh, this is the first of several videos, a series that I'm putting together of relatively short videos on the theme of qualitative data analysis. Uh, mainly thinking about more social scientific approaches to working with qualitative data. Uh, the range of videos is going to include uh, some on coding or anti-coding or post-coding, uh, working with concepts, working with theory in analysis, 10 ways to be wrong in qualitative analysis and what good analytical processes might look like. Uh, today's is going to be a kind of foundational one which is a talk about what it can mean to get to know a concept, how you can work with a concept and kind of the expectations that you might have about what's going to happen as you grow to kind of an intimate knowledge of a concept and some of the things you can expect on the way. So I've got a slide to show you and then I'll come back and uh, talk to you again directly afterwards. So, here we go, here is the slide. I call it the messy history of working with theory or concepts. And uh, what I'm going to talk through is kind of seven stages, but as you'll see in the red uh, writing at the bottom there, I don't see this as a linear process. These are all kind of parts of working with it. Some of them have to come first and last, but in between, kind of numbers two to six, uh, will happen in, in various different orders. So obviously the first time you kind of become aware of a concept is a kind of an initial encounter, and I put that in brackets, WTF, you know, what the fuck. It's often very hard to understand what a concept means. Uh, you kind of, the concept is the problem that you're working on. Kind of what does it mean, how do I understand it, where does it fit in broader theories, how is it similar or different to others. And then through lots and lots of reading of the original theoretical works and its application, you develop an early understanding, and I've called this an initial appropriation or potentially initial misappropriation. And certainly in my own history of working with theories in activity theory and concepts of activity theory, I do realise that I kind of rather misunderstood what their application might be or what their real meaning might be. I put there the word context because as you develop that early understanding, it's always usually with a view to applying it in a particular area. You have your thesis or your area of research that you're working on and you're trying to make connections from the raw abstract concept to that context or that matter that interests you. So there is always some appropriation going on and I think that's a very normal and healthy thing. And then we have what I call expansion, where you're working in increasing confidence with a concept. And that's, it might be when you're reading things and you're kind of going, yeah, yeah, that's not challenging my understanding in any way. That's what I expect to find people talking about in this concept. You might feel that you could probably be able to explain it to somebody else with reasonable kind of degree of confidence. Another part of working with a theory is, or concepts, is recognition. And that's being able to take something abstract and say, I can see it here. It's this example in my data, and it's here. Um, so that's a, 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 a kind of a piece of intellectual work in itself. It's part of the biography of working with concepts, is that you can, t uh, you can spot them in their non-abstract form. So an example of a concept. So it might be that you're doing some interviews, or you have some observation notes, or documents that you're looking at, and you're able to see uh, the concept in an example where it's not being flagged to you as such by an author who's already done some analysis. This is you independently recognising that you can see a concrete example of an abstract context concept. Then I've mentioned boundaries, and that's slightly different. That's sort of an extension of recognition, but it's saying, oh, it's not that, and it's not there. And that's, I think, a slightly more advanced form of working with a, a concept. It's one thing to say, I understand a concept and I can see it here. But it's another one to get to the edges of it and saying, well, it's not that there. And obviously there will be some extreme examples where it's obvious. But really what this, where this becomes advanced is when you're at those, at those blurred edges. And you start having to do hard work about thinking, why would this be an example of this concept or, or a theoretical idea? And why would it not? And uh, there are people, McQueen et al, have written about kind of co-book development for team-based researchers, saying that it's just as important to define your exclusions as it is your inclusions, which maps onto the ideas of recognition and boundaries. 
So I've talked through the idea that you can come across a concept, you develop an early understanding of it in its more abstract form and appropriate it to a kind of an area of interest or subject matter that is important to you. Um, you kind of develop an expanded understanding through extensive reading. And then when you're working with data, you start to get that kind of go through that process of both recognition, it's here, it's there, and kind of boundaries. It's not that and it's not over there. And then once you kind of start to be able to see your, a concept in your data or see where it isn't, it can then take on the role of tool use. And as a Vygotskyan scholar, I kind of, I've put there mediates SO activity. So tool use mediates what a subject does on an object. And in this example, the subject is you. It's you doing your qualitative data analysis. And the object is what you're trying to find out from your data. It's the of kind of the thing that you're working on. And what's at the top of that triangular diagram there, tools, is the concept or the theoretical framework that you might be working with. And Vygotsky says that tool use mediates our activity. It changes the nature of our activity. And when it's done effectively, what it does is actually change our focus from the problem to the nature of the solution. Now this is from Vygotsky and theory. But remember initially I said that at first the problem is the concept itself, so our object might be understanding the concept. And then the concept or the theoretical idea becomes a tool to work on something else which is the object of our analysis. But as we do that, we change from having a problem in our analysis to the tool being able to help us identify the solution which might be a particular interpretation or set of outcomes or uh, answers to our research questions. Now, Vygotsky also tells us that when we use tools, they work back on us. So as we use a concept, it changes both the way we look at the object, particularly from a problem focus to a solution focus, but it also works back and changes us. And in this case, it could be that through applying the tool, the concept as a tool on the object of our analysis, actually that process works back and shapes our understanding of the concept. So there's something in the, the biography or the development of working and understanding concepts and theory that says when we get to that tool use, the, ch the understanding of the concept isn't fixed. In fact, it's through using it as a tool that the understanding of the concept, your understanding of the concept, develops. And at this point, that concept is something that's very much explicit in the way you're trying to work with theory. And what I put there at number seven is a kind of the idea that for some of us, some concepts or theories, and not necessarily all of them, certainly not all the ones I've worked with, become what you might call a sensibility, which is where that mediating process gets internalised and you don't actually kind of pay much attention to the tools anymore. It becomes just sort of a, a natural or instinctive way of how we go, how we see the world, how we notice things, how we respond um, to events or things that we can see in our data. I'm not suggesting, as I said early on, that this is a linear process, uh, but I am suggesting that these are important things to bear in mind when we're thinking about concepts and how they work. So, just to recoup, there's an initial encounter, there are early understandings with appropriation or potentially misappropriation involved with them, there is kind of an expansive notion where you're kind of you're growing confidence in the nature of an abstract concept and what it means and then it starts to get engaged with your data and in that process there is an idea of recognition I can see it there and there is an idea of boundaries it kind of it's not there and here are the edges of the concept and when we get to edges that's when we have to do really hard intellectual hygiene work then you can start to apply the tool the concept as a tool which mediates the way you interact with your data you have to be able to recognize a concept before you can do that and you have to be able to establish its boundaries before you can start using a concept as an explicit tool to work on your data analysis as you do that according to Vygotsky who's one of my intellectual heroes not only do you change your approach to your data analysis and it takes on this mediating function from rather than just trying to spot the concept or see where it is or it isn't. When you're working with the concept, it changes from a problem in analysis to casting light on the nature of the solution, which is often going to be an answer to a research question. But as you do that, the concept, the process also works back on you and you might refine your understanding of the concept, which might mean that the properties of recognition and boundaries change 
that you get better at spotting something, that you you see it now where you might have missed it before, or you'd redefine a boundary, you extend it, or you might shrink it. So it doesn't mean that um, because these certain things are required before you get to the tool use stage, uh, they don't then, it's not job done, they can still change, there's still, uh, there's a very cyclical, and I called it a messy process. And then this is a final idea about sensibility, which is when that mediating work of the explicit work with concepts becomes more instinctive or natural um, and you kind of start to see the world through those things and it's a kind of almost like a threshold that can be crossed and uh, there's a certain kind of intimacy or living with concepts and that can take years and it may not be necessary if you're in thesis work uh, some people will feel that they get there others may never get there and it's not necessarily a sign that you're doing good or bad work but it is something to be alert to that idea that you can kind of get to a stage of working with concepts where you're not actually trying to use them. They're just part of how you start to see data, how you start to see the world, how you respond to things and what you notice. So this is the first video of a series, as I said. These are some foundational ideas that I think help to expose uh, what it can be to work with a concept and perhaps address some of the concerns that I've often had about kind of am I doing it well. Uh, the next video will take up some ideas about what it means to seek an interpretation of the data rather than any interpretation or the interpretation. And again, I'll come back to speaking to some of these ideas about working with concepts and theories. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye-bye.